How's it going everyone? Welcome to the first ever Friar series recap where we're going to be going over the whole entire series, my thoughts, my reactions, and also the stats to go with it. The 2023 baseball season has officially kicked off. Our Friars took on the Rockies. As we know, we've struggled in the past with the Rockies and there were signs and symptoms of that being a case in 2023. But we held it out at the end. 2-2 series. Let's go ahead and break down game one. Game one started out with a pretty decent start from Blake Snell. Like your average Blake Snell start. Walked a lot of people. Had a lot of strikeouts. I believe nine strikeouts. He pitched about four innings. Five innings. Wasn't the greatest stat line for him. But something that, well, we're used to. He did give up one earned, which was not bad. We can't complain about it. Pretty decent start. But the bats were just not there. Besides, of course, Xander Bogarts. Xander Bogarts went off in game one, guys. He had three hits, two doubles. He looked amazing. It was a coming out party. Welcome to San Diego, Xander Bogarts. But then the wheels fell off when we went to Nabil Krizma and we went to Tapia. And next thing you know, it was an infuriating game. One of the worst ways we could have started our season, to be completely honest. And yes, it is one of 162. But it sets the tone and that energy kind of came into game two as well, to be honest. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to score to win. We didn't score enough runs, but we also didn't use our best arms out of the bullpen. I get it. Robert Suarez is injured. You know, Luis Garcia is an eighth inning guy and we needed a lot of bullpen help. So we had to call on a couple names we don't really want to use in big situations like Neil Krizma and like Tapia. But next thing you know, the game was over before it even mattered, before we could hand the ball to Hayter, Luis Garcia, or in the future cases, Robert Suarez. I mean, honestly, I felt very disappointed after game one to give my complete and honest thoughts. I was expecting a lot and we just weren't that in my opinion. I, But at the same time, you can't get mad. So you know what? It was really just an unfortunate way to start the season and game two kind of continued with that. Game two starter was Nick Martinez. It was Nick Martinez versus Kyle Friedland. And Nick Martinez didn't really have his best stuff. I know that error on Xander Bogarts was not good in that first inning, but they ended up cashing in on it. But once again, the bats were non-existent. Xander Bogarts did do his job. Besides that, him and Haseon Kim were the only ones providing any offensive support. And it was just a painful scene to watch. It was very unfortunate. But at the end of the day, it's how we've struggled against the Rockies for the past now three years. Is We've been a much better ball club, but we've always struggled playing the Rockies. And it was very unfortunate to see that Nick Martinez did not pitch that well. We went into the bullpen. The bullpen actually didn't do terrible in my opinion i think the bullpen looked a lot better more well-rounded you know you had tim hill getting out of a big jam but offensively lackluster just lackluster it seems like the first two games they were sleepwalking also one thing i will say if you're a rockies fan watching this video kyle freeland made a hell of a play making that off balance throw i just wanted to mention that because i feel like that is completely gone under the radar and that should be a top 10 play because first of all, he is a lefty pitcher going against his body, making a jumping throw. I know he kind of got injured on it, but man, that was impressive. Also, just once again, unfortunate plays, you know, Manny Machado kind of looked a mess in the first two games. I know he did have a hit and he had a sack fly, but listen, this is not the Manny Machado we were expecting. Almost as atrocious as Juan Soto has been so far. Of course, these guys are going to find their game. But man, it was just tough to watch to start the season like this. Game three was Jose Urania versus Michael Waka. Michael Waka making his debut. And the offense jumped on Urania right away. We jumped out and we scored. Man, it was humongous. It was huge because I was starting to get worried. I don't know how you guys felt, but I was starting to get a little worried myself. I was like, hey, what are the Padres doing? This is not the team we signed up for. This is not the team we paid for. This is not what we we're expecting and they jumped on Urena. With Bogarts hitting his first career Padre home run, not the last one of the series, but man, that ball was crushed. It was huge. It just felt great just seeing that. It kind of ignited the bats. We started flowing from there on. Pieces started to fall in place, and we did play small ball. This was the only home run of the game, and we did do great. You know, we scored five, six runs in the first three innings, it was humongous for a team that looked so bad offensively. It was humongous to jump on a starter like this, and we got him out of the game by the third inning. 
Now, Waka did nothing but dominate for the first five innings. The sixth inning, he ran into some trouble. And honestly, I think that we left him out there a little too long. And to be completely honest, I think the story of this series, besides our bats starting really cold, was, well, what was the decision-making with Bob Melvin and the pitching staff? It was really, really weird because, I mean, everyone's on pitch counts. I get it. But he left some people in too long. He used weird arms like in game one. But that was the story. I mean, honestly, he had four earned, but he looked really, really good. A lot of hope in the, for the future for Michael Walker. I was really impressed. I really liked what he did. Carpenter had a lot of big hits. Everyone just kind of joined the hit parade in that game. It was good to see, um, you know, all around, it was a great series from Carpenter. I think Carpenter looked really well. I think he was probably one of the top three hitters of the series. Obviously, Xander Bogarts was the best. And you know what? Second best, honestly, Trent Grisham. I think there was humongous strides from Trent Grisham. He looked night and day. I tweeted that out on Twitter. There was a humongous difference between what type of baseball player he came into last year looking like and this year. It is night and day. He looks more aggressive. He looks more comfortable. And he looks like the guy that we want him to be. Now, moving into the final game of the series, game four, Seth Lugo took the bump for the San Diego Padres, basically starting for the first time in five, six years. And he did not disappoint, guys. I mean, honestly, I was not expecting him to dazzle as well as he did. That curveball is off the charts. It is probably the best curveball in Major League Baseball right now. I'm going to be completely honest. That thing looked unhittable. He had no hitter stuff. I mean, we were talking about a reliever, a guy that's been known as a reliever, a very solid reliever in his career. He pitched into the seventh inning as a reliever. That's relentless. That's not what people were expecting. He looked great on that military Sunday. Now, the offense started out great. Trent Grisham went yard. Bogarts hit another one. And it just, we the bats were swinging. That's all that mattered. The bats were scoring. We looked really, really good. Hayer comes out, does his thing to knock the save down. And I mean, honestly, like this was, this is the game that we should have been playing the whole series. We don't need to blow them out. It's hard to blow teams out in baseball. It happens. But honestly, in a regular season game, anyone can win. In the first two games, they looked so flat-footed that the, you know, the Rockies gave it to them, to be completely honest. The Rockies served them. Of course, everyone's expecting, well, why wouldn't the Rockies roll over? They still have as much of a shot of making the World Series, making the playoffs as we do right now. Everyone, you know, has a shot at the beginning of the year. And the Rockies came out looking great. You got to give them credit. They played great baseball. I think we definitely played way below our ability. And I think game three was definitely in our ability. I think Michael Walker doesn't really give up four runs like that that often. He It happened in a hurry, so to say. But I mean, honestly, Seth Lugo, that's my, that's my player of the series. Seth Lugo coming out and dazzling. Obviously, Xander Bogarts, you got to give him credit. And I'm going to give him credit. But Seth Lugo, he surprised me the most. Everyone was expecting Xander Bogarts. This guy's one of the best shortstops in the league. Everyone's expecting him to perform. Obviously, he performed way above what any of us were expecting. But Seth Lugo, my guy, you dominated out there. So that wraps up the series. The Padres are 2-2, two and two, sitting at 500, taking on the Diamondbacks starting tonight. This video will be uploaded before that starts. And I'm excited to see what we bring. You know, we got a lot of younger guys making the starts. Ryan Weathers is making a start tonight, which is going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to be tuned in for that one. Of course, San Diego State playing the national championship. Got to wish them good luck. Want to see the Aztecs win it all, as we all do. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be a great day in San Diego sports. I hope you guys all check out all the different games and everything going on. And if you want to see more videos like this where I recap the series, let me know in the comment section below. I'm glad to be uploading again. It feels good. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.